Welcome back to TNT, and today we're going to study the difference between uh, the rapture and the great tribulation and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, in this day and age, uh, people are lumping it all together, and so I believe it's imperative to understand the differences. But before we begin, let's open up in a word of prayer. Father, we come before you and we thank you for your word. We pray that you give us understanding, open up our eyes, enlighten us, that we can search a word as hid treasures. Uh, reveal everything to us through your Holy Spirit. Uh, even Moses said that he was slow of speech. Lord, help my speech, that everything that I say is uh, uh, articulated in a way that everyone understands. And we will thank you today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Uh, I just want to throw out a couple names before we start studying about uh, prophecy and not just prophecy, but um, Bible teaching in general. Uh, I want to give you some names of some people that uh, I strongly recommend and suggest for further reading, further studying. Uh, Peter Ruckman, he's got excellent commentaries, excellent sermons, uh, excellent booklets. Uh, uh, the man has written so many things. has been such an encouragement in my personal life as well. And I highly recommend his stuff. Uh, Robert Breaker, I didn't write his first name. Robert Breaker has excellent videos if you go to his YouTube channel. Uh, he puts out a video almost every day and very good. And he also puts them out in Spanish. So if you know some Spanish speaking people that you need to get the Word of God to them, I strongly recommend him. Uh, Dr. Gene Kim, he has some excellent videos as well and I strongly recommend him. He also puts them out about every day. Uh, I think right now he's putting out some series on the book of Revelation. It's, it sounds like it's going to be very interesting, so I, I recommend him. Also, James Knox, he, he's from Deland, Florida. He has a, a, a Bible Baptist church there. He has his own school, and uh, he's written some stuff, but his sermons are excellent. His Bible study is very thorough. I highly recommend him as well. And we're going to go way back. This guy is Clarence Larkin in the early uh, 20th century. He was, uh, he was an architect that became a Christian, got saved, got into the book, really ate it up, studied it. And he used his ability uh, with uh, architecture to, to do hundreds of charts. Very, very good. Very scriptural. And uh, so I highly recommend uh, these men for further study. But today we're going to uh, kind of outline a few things. This isn't going to be so thorough because I want to get back into the book of Acts, studying that. But I want to show you some things to prove to you that there's differences from the Bible uh, in the rapture and the second coming. So I want to show you uh, through a line. We'll make a line here. Uh, we'll call this life, the earth in general. We have the cross of Christ. And then we have the church age. Okay, and before that, we had the period that was uh, Israel. And then we have the tribulation. These are all future events after the cross. And then after the tribulation, we have the millennium. And then even after the millennium, we have eternity future. I'll just call it eternity. Okay. So the Bible says to rightly divide the word of God. In 2 Timothy 2.15, we're to study to show ourselves unto approved. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we need to rightly divide. It's 2 Timothy 2.15. And if you don't rightly divide, everything else will not make sense. And, and uh, even on social media, I get on Twitter, I get uh, going with some people because they frankly, you give them all the Bible references, you show that there's differences in the dispensations. And people get, some of them get actually, actually get kind of nasty, uh, but there, there are differences. And the Bible commands us to see the differences, that there's differences in dispensations, there's differences in the, uh, 
and what's being taught. So you have to rightly divide. So I'm going to show you some divisions. First of all, uh, there's this division here uh, of Israel coming to the cross as a nation. Okay, and in, as a nation, they were required to do certain things to uh, become part of this uh, heavenly kingdom. And uh, so there were some works involved along with their faith. All the way up to, you see, Peter, Peter's message after the ascension of Christ, and even Stephen, they were still preaching this kingdom message, and then Israel flat out rejects the message. They, they try to kill Peter. They put him in prison. They uh, stoned Stephen, and that was the end. Jesus was sitting. Jesus right now sits at the right hand of God. But at that time, he was standing. He was waiting for them to receive him. And they, they rejected him again. So from that moment on, there's a mystery. The mystery of the church is revealed to Paul. And this was the, the spiritual kingdom. And this includes not only the Jews, but also the Gentiles. And the Gentiles uh, can be part of the body of Christ through the spiritual kingdom. And the only way you can get into this kingdom is salvation by grace through faith alone. And we see that in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Okay, so it's salvation by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we are faith only. Thank God uh, we, are, we are saved. To, we are created to do good works, of course. But our good works isn't what's keeping us saved. It's not what's... Uh, we can't earn or keep what we, uh, we, what we couldn't earn in the first place. A free gift is a free gift. Now, after the church age is over, and I'm not a date setter. I don't know when it is. Uh, it could be today. It could be maybe another... For another several years, I don't know. But someday in the near future, I do believe, there's going to be what I, uh, the weak term is the rapture, but it's also called um, the catching up or the calling up of the church. And Jesus is going to come down in a cloud, receive the bride of Christ, and then we'll be taken away and then at that moment, the Antichrist will be revealed. The tribulation will start for seven years. And halfway through the tribulation, there will be another rapture. But this time it's just for... The 144,000 sealed male Jews during the tribulation period. And we'll see them in Revelation 14. Sitting or standing in, uh, and singing praises around the throne. So there's, there's going to be another uh, catching up of this 144,000. And then at the end of this seven years, we're rightly dividing, like the Bible says, there is coming the second coming of Jesus Christ. And this is when he sets up his physical kingdom on this earth. And he sits on his father David's throne. And he rules and reigns for a thousand years. And then when this thousand years, toward the end of the thousand years, Satan is going to be loosed for a little season, the Bible says. And then he's going to deceive the nations one more time. They're going to surround Jerusalem. And then he's going to wipe out everything. He's going to melt the earth and the heavens with a fire. And then he is going to redo that new heaven and new earth. And we have the eternity future 
So all these things are yet to come. Uh, but before we start talking about uh, how these things play out and give you some Bible verses, I, wanna, I want you to notice that there's a particular uh, thing in the Bible, and that's called this cloud. This cloud is always appearing in the Bible. If you look in Exodus, remember the cloud that appeared unto the children of Israel through the time of Moses? This cloud keeps appearing whenever there's an ascension uh, of uh, of. Remember Moses uh, went to Mount Sinai. This this cloud came down, and God gave uh, the children of Israel through Moses the Ten Commandments and the Law, and uh, that's in Exodus. If you want to study that out, but even all the way through, we we see this cloud and, and mentioned several times, but. In recent times before the cross, we see this cloud mentioned in Mark uh, chapter 9, verse 7. We're going to read that. Mark chapter 9, and verse 7. Mark chapter 9, and verse 7. It says, And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. And suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no man more save Jesus only with themselves. Now this was at uh, the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus goes up to this mount. He's there, he unifies with God. He gets the glory that he had before uh, he came to this earth. And they saw his glory. And this happened in Mark chapter 9, verse 7, before the cross, this cloud. Now we see uh, this cloud again up here. And let's look at Acts chapter 1. In verse 9, I'll write this down. Acts chapter 1. I'm running out of room, but I'm trying to squeeze in a cloud here. Acts chapter 1. In verse 9, we read. And when he was, uh, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So this cloud again appears and receives Jesus out of their sight, and that's a rapture, that's an ascension, a catching up, however you want to call it. Uh, some people get upset because they say, "Well, the word rapture is never found in the Bible." Uh, that's okay. The word Trinity isn't found in the in the word or in the Bible either, but it is scriptural. So this is very scriptural. What we're going to be talking about next. Now, how does this cloud relate to the body of Christ in the in the church age? And I'm gonna uh, I'm running out of room here, but I'm gonna write two verses for you to look up. Hebrews twelve one. Hebrews 12.1, you can see that, okay. Hebrews 12.1, and I want you to look up 1 Thessalonians 4.17, 1 Thessalonians 4.17, we're going to see this cloud again, so let me start Hebrews 4, I'm sorry, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. There's the cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So we see again this cloud. Now let's see it one more time before uh, we get into the rapture of the church. 1 Thessalonians Chapter 4, verse 17. Let's start in verse 16, first of all. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we... Now, Paul was assuming that it would have been him because everybody believes... Uh, that they could be involved in this rapture because the rapture could have taken place any time and it still can. So technically we, which we are alive right now, 
So this includes us until the day we die, Lord willing. Hopefully the rapture happens before. I, I pray that it does. That's our blessed hope. But nevertheless, uh, it says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. See that? They're caught up, right? They're taken up the same way Jesus was in Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Caught up to this great cloud of witnesses, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Now the problem is uh, those that believe in the, the post-tribulation, we believe in pre-tribulation rapture. There's the post-millennialist and then there's the amillennialist. And uh, they believe that uh, some the church may have to go through the tribulation, or they also there's a, another group of people that believe that uh, any everything in the Book of Revelation is just history and it's not speaking of future events. But that's not true either. And when we study Revelation, uh, you will see that that's not true because none of the not the those things were not fulfilled. Uh, Actually, the book of Revelation was not written until uh, after almost 20 to 30 years after the fall of, of Jerusalem. So these are future events that uh, John is speaking about. But this tribulation happened. And uh, we don't, this isn't the uh, Revelation Bible study today. And we're going to get back into the book of Acts uh, after this. I, I should be able to get through this lesson today. But if you look at Revelation chapter 14, uh, Revelation chapter 14, and I there's another group, the 144,000, right? You read up until Revelation 14, they're, they're uh, preaching throughout the earth. And look at verse 1. And it says in Revelation 14, 1, and I, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And we see this if you look in Revelation 7, 1. You see them, that they are Jews, 12,000 out of each tribe of Israel. Of the 12 tribes, making 144,000, having their father's name written on their foreheads. Uh, ironically, the, the Antichrist requires the mark of the beast to be put on the forehead or the right hand. But they are marked with uh, their father's name on their foreheads. And it says, I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song. Where? Where were they on the earth? No. Before the throne and before the beast and before the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. This is not the church. These, the Bible makes it very clear that this is a different group of people. These are Jews. They're the 144,000 marked from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. The body of Christ makes up everybody that is saved in the church age. Uh, so far it's been 2,020 years. But uh, these people make up the church age, are raptured before the Antichrist comes on the scene. And, and you'll say, okay, how, okay, Paul, how does that happen? How, how is that true? Well, look at 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4. Let's back up. Let's start in verse 1. I'm sorry. 2 Thessalonians. Let me write this down. 2 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 1 through the following verses. It says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? There's talk about the second, that's the second advent, and by our gathering together unto him. That's a separate event. And, the Bible makes it, uh, an emphasis on the word and. 
and by our gathering together unto him. That's the rapture of 1 Thessalonians 4.17. All right? That ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled. There's no reason to be troubled because we're not going through the tribulation. We shouldn't be shaken in our mind. They were fearing, even in the day of Paul, as Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, that they were going to have to endure to the end through this Antichrist, but it's not for the church. He says, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, talk about the second advent, shall not come except there uh, come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, uh, the son of perdition. Now this falling away will not happen until after uh, the, the rapture of the church. And, it, and you want to see this falling away that he speaks of. I want you to turn to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 6. Remember, Hebrews is written to the Hebrews. It's not written to the church. It's not written, written to the Gentile church. It's written to the Hebrews. And the Hebrews are going through the tribulation. This is a book written for them doctrinally. So it's important that you get that. Rightly divide the word of truth. Hebrews 6, verse 6. It says, uh, let's see, in verse 4, first of all, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. All right, this is during the tribulation period. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Right? This is future. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and to put him to an open shame. So this is the tribulation. During the tribulation, uh, it goes back to Israel. They need faith. And works, they have to maintain their salvation. They, the Bible says that they have the testimony of Jesus Christ and they keep his commandments. So there's a difference. We live in the age of grace, salvation by grace through faith alone. And uh, that's because we, we were not born under the law. We were not born uh, Jews. We were not born uh, with the commandments that Israel was given. So we're, we're different. But when it goes back to the nation of Israel, you see the 144,000. You see the Jews, they, they, when they uh, fall away, you can't, they crucify Jesus afresh. They were the ones that crucified Jesus. They crucify him afresh. And it's impossible for them to be renewed under repentance. How are they going to fall away? Well, they'll probably end up taking the mark of the beast. Uh, they will probably worship the, the false prophet. And uh, they will get sucked into that because no man can buy or sell without the mark of the beast. And that's going to be a, a very difficult time. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. That's for Israel, not the church. It's important to get those things straightened out. Now, uh, I think this will be all for our lesson today. Uh, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to go to our website or... Uh, uh, go to TNT uh, at the bottom of this video and ask questions. I'd be glad to give you more information. Uh, I want to get back into the book of Acts, uh, the next lesson, so we can keep going through. It's going to take a long time, uh, Lord willing, because we have to go through every verse and every chapter. And there's so many things uh, to learn and glean from. But periodically, as we go through every passage of Scripture, we're going to break away and do some of these side studies uh, so that you understand there's a difference between the rapture and the second coming. Now, Jesus Christ is going to come back. Uh, look at, uh, let's see, I think I'll give you one more passage. Look at, I'll give you some uh, passages to look up. Revelation chapter 19, I believe that's it. Revelation chapter 19. And in verse 11. Revelation 19. In verse 11. It says, I saw 
heaven open, and behold a white horse. And he, uh, he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but himself. He was, a, he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood, and one day we'll get into that. What is this vesture dipped in blood? It's pretty, that's another, another interesting study. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies, armies, which followed, which were in heaven, followed him upon white horses. This is the bride of Christ. This is the church. It says, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. The church has already been through the judgment seat of Christ. We've been made clean. We've got a rewards. We're spotless without spot or wrinkle. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the Almighty God, and he hath on his vesture and on the thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. That's our Lord. We are looking forward to that time, and we're going to be with him when he comes back to set up this earthly kingdom. And... Uh, Hopefully this has made you uh, 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 better able to understand uh, how we rightly divide. This is what we believe. This is what the Bible teaches. This is what the Bible says to do. So we are rightly dividing. So from now on, as we go through the, the book of Acts, you will know when we speak of these things, uh, what category and what division to put them in. So I thank you for uh, listening to this video. I pray that God blesses you. Let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that you give us through your word. We love you more than anything else, Lord. We love you more than uh, our lives ourselves. Lord, we, we crave your word. We want to know everything in your book. So please teach us. Continue through this series. Bring more people to the website, to TNT. Not only just for your honor and glory, but that they, uh, for also the ability for them to learn and to grow and to hunger and to learn new things. Maybe, maybe there's Christians out there that uh, have just been saved and, and they've never grown. They don't have anybody to teach them. And there's so many wolves out there among the sheep. Please protect them, Lord, and bring them into the knowledge of your truth in every way. And we thank you once again, for it's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. All right, God bless you, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.